For a career in creative web design, it's fairly critical to study Adobe Dreamweaver. And make sure you choose a program that covers training for the full Adobe CS3 suite, or even better, the CS4 suite, including Flash and ActionScript so that you can use Dreamweaver commercially as a web designer. If you're looking to gain your full Adobe Certified Professional or the Adobe Certified Expert accreditation, then these skills are paramount. But designing the website is just the beginning of the skill set that you're going to need. To create traffic, maintain its content and work with dynamic database driven sites, you're going to need to bolt on further skills such as HTML, PHP, MySQL and Apache Web Server. You should also get yourself a good grounding in e-commerce and search engine optimization. Let's be honest, individual job security really doesn't exist any longer. Most companies will get rid of workers if things get tight. But if your skills and qualifications are in an expanding marketplace, then you're in the right environment for true job security. Where there's a shortage of trained professionals, you'll always find companies looking for the right people. Take the IT industry for example. The last eSkills survey showed there was a skills gap of around about 26%. So this means that for every four jobs that exist in IT, there are only three trained people to do them. There's really been no better time or market conditions for getting trained into this rapidly evolving market. Students who are looking to get a career in IT very often have no idea which path they should take or what area to get qualified in. After all, if you've got no experience in the IT market, how can you possibly expect to know what somebody actually does day to day, let alone of course decide on which training route is going to be the most appropriate one to get you there? Really, the key to sorting this out is to take a good look at a number of different areas. Things like your personality type, what kind of things do you enjoy and what don't you like? why you want to get into IT. And you'll need an explanation of each career path and what makes them different from each other. And clearly, you'll need to think about what effort, commitment and time that you're prepared to put into your training. So the only real way of covering these properly is through an in-depth discussion with somebody who knows the industry well enough to be able to guide you. Always remember, the training course or the certificate are not your end goals. The job or the career that you're training for is. Potentially you could train for only one year and yet be doing that job for 20 years or more. So don't make the mistake of choosing what sounds like an interesting course only to spend 20 years in a job that you don't like. Keep your eye on whatever it is you're trying to achieve and then build your training around that, not the other way around. That's why you always need to get advice from an industry professional. Take a good look at the certifications that you're considering. Make sure they're all current and commercially required. Don't bother with courses that lead to unknown in-house type certificates. Only the fully recognized accreditations from the major players like Microsoft, CompTIA, Adobe and Cisco are really going to mean anything to employers. Any competent and professional advisor will want to really get to grips with your current abilities and experience. This is the only way that you can establish the starting point for your studies. And if this is your first attempt at an IT exam, then you might want to cut your teeth on some basic user skills first. Take advice on the best place for you to start based on your abilities. Even the biggest ambitions have to start with those first small steps. Amazingly, most UK training companies still teach IT from workbooks and reference manuals. For most of us, this tends to be needlessly boring, drawn out and slow. Psychologists who've looked at learning tell us that we remember a lot more if we involve all of our senses, and if we get practically involved in what it is we're studying. So the answer is to find a course that uses multimedia CD and DVD ROMs, and always make sure you're shown some kind of demonstration from the training company. Your training materials should include videos of the instructors, live demonstrations and slideshows. It's generally best to avoid training that's purely online. You want actual physical CD or DVD ROM course materials so that you can use them whenever and wherever you want and you're not totally reliant on your broadband connection. One thing that often gets overlooked by students is how the training is broken down. Typically you'll join a program that takes 6 to 24 months and you'll receive one element at a time until graduation. Now this might sound logical on the surface, but what if you find that that specific structure doesn't suit you? And what if you don't finish all the modules inside of their set timescales? 
Ideally, you want all of your study materials up front so that you can maybe vary the order if you find another route that's more intuitive to you. You'll find that in-centre workshop days are often sold as a big benefit by many companies. But if you talk to most of the students who've used them, they'll tell you the opposite's true. You've got all that travelling, for instance, multiple trips and often hundreds of miles, and the classes are normally Monday to Friday, which means taking two or three days off work all the time. Well, if you've only got 20 days holidays a year, using half of that on training doesn't leave much for you. And don't forget the extra cost of travelling and accommodation either. Sometimes this runs into hundreds and even thousands of pounds extra. And maybe you'd like to work at your own pace. Or maybe you want to keep your training private so there aren't any repercussions at work. And how do you honestly feel about asking questions in a class full of other people? All these reasons and more are why it's much simpler to watch and learn from pre-filmed classes, taking them when it's convenient for you and not someone else. You can redo the modules as many times as you want and there's no need to take notes because you've already got the lesson. Quite simply, you'll save time, hassle and money. Many companies provide a job placement assistance service to help you get your first IT job. But often, too much is made of this, as it's really not that difficult for any motivated and trained person to get a junior role in the IT industry, as there's such a shortage of trained staff. You would ideally want CV and interview advice though, and we encourage students to get their CV updated the day they start training. Many support jobs are offered to students who are still studying and haven't even passed an exam yet. At least you'll be on the maybe pile of CVs rather than the no pile. The best way to get placed is through specialised and independent recruitment consultants. The bottom line is they only get paid when they place you, so they've got the necessary incentive. Many students, it seems, are prepared to study their hearts out for years sometimes, only to give up at the last hurdle when looking for their job. Market yourself. Make an effort to get in front of employers. Don't expect that perfect job to just fall into your lap. One question that often comes up is why should we get commercial certification rather than traditional academic qualifications that you get through schools, colleges or universities? Well, essentially industry recognises that gaining the proper accreditation from the likes of Microsoft, CompTIA, Cisco or Adobe is far more effective and specialised, saving both time and money. Commercial certification concentrates on the actual skills that are required, together with an appropriate level of background knowledge, rather than going into the depths of background detail that academic courses can often get bogged down in. The bottom line is, recognised IT certification provides exactly what an employer needs. It says what you do in the title. For example, the Microsoft Certified Professional Qualification in Windows XP Administration and Configuration. So, an employer just needs to identify exactly what they need and what certifications will fulfil that need, which of course makes it much simpler for them, and that's why they prefer it. IT has now evolved into one of the most exciting and groundbreaking industries you could possibly be involved with. We've only just begun to scrape the surface of how technology is going to affect our lives in the future. Over the coming years, computers and the internet will profoundly affect the way we see and the way we interact with the world around us. And don't forget, of course, the average IT salary is considerably higher than the national average salary. So in general, you'll probably earn significantly more as a trained IT professional than you would in most other jobs. There's a huge UK-wide demand for qualified IT professionals, and with the constant growth we're experiencing in the marketplace, it looks like there will be for quite some time yet to come.